Now, I find that I drive better if I stand back here so that the ball is about opposite my left toe. And that way, my weight is behind the shot and I can hit through the ball. Now, watch it. You see, I don't have to shift my weight during the backswing because it is already back where it can get into the shot. When I start the club down, every part of my body starts moving toward the ball. If this were not true, I should lose a great deal of power from a stroke. This view of the feet may illustrate better what I mean. This shot was hit hard, and you can see the left heel come down as the weight begins to move forward. And at the finish, the right foot is supporting practically no weight at all. Now remember, in driving, you haven't the same problem that you have in playing a wood club from the fairway. Instead of elevation, here you want length. You want to strike the ball so that it will keep on going after it hits the ground. So instead of hitting a ball down, as I do with a brassy, I try to hit it fairly in the back and sweep it off the tee. This sort of a stroke produces an arching flight, not the kind that rises quickly and drops almost dead, but the sort of shot that strikes the ground at an angle and has lots of roll. This diagram will show a marked flatness in the swing near the bottom of the arc as the club strikes the ball. The blow neither comes down sharply before impact nor goes up abruptly afterwards. I make no effort to stop the club after I hit the ball, but let it travel on of its own momentum until it arrives at the finish you see here. Now I want you to notice that the shaft of the club at the top of the swing is not parallel to the line of play. The head end of the club is directed considerably to the right of the objective. And in starting down, it drops back so that it can never get outside the line of flight. 